blooming sunny skies are endless and with the Easter holiday wrapped up it is officially spring. Now for the first half of the show today we're embracing the season with a themed style guide to refresh your wardrobe and your space. Planning on toasting to the season at a colorful weekend brunch or a garden party then you need to get your wardrobe ready by indulging in the joy of spring fashion. This season, expect to see flowy maxis, floral headbands, vintage jewelry, along with soft pastels like mint green, cherry blossom pink, lavender, peach, sea foam, and silver gray. From bright bouquet templates to delicate blooming motifs, florals are a seasoned favorite that transition well from spring to summer. When choosing an ensemble within a floral yardstick, your options can be limitless, depending on the vibe and persona you want to portray. When paired with solid colors, the radiance of floral prints is magnified. Bonus points if that solid color is in a pastel shade. Minimalist colors like white or black also work well with florals, helping to illuminate their features. Pastel colors are another big trend at the moment, and from high end to high street, we've spotted quite a number of celebrities and influencers rocking the hues. For something that makes a pretty big statement, pastels are surprisingly easy to wear. Consider a pastel hue that will pop against your skin instead of leaving you looking washed out. The venue to which you're wearing the outfit also matters, so read the dress code before you decide how to style your pastel look. Pastel colors work in a range of settings, from smart events like weddings and fashion shows to a casual hangout with friends. Also ideal for a laid-back office dress code or after-work event. Not ready to go full pastel? Test the waters with some spring-approved nails or a playful makeup look like this cotton candy-inspired masterpiece from Mbali Christina. With multicolored oval shapes, this sweet look reminds us of candy-coated chocolate Easter eggs. We also love the extra pops of color on the bottom lashes. What's a spring-ready ensemble without a few head-turning accessories? If the bright and bold designs of the season are anything to go by, you won't resist having a bit of fun with your embellishments. From oversized totes to colorful gems, we're shining a light on all of the accessories that should play a starring role in your wardrobe this season. Practical, timeless, and an easy addition into a laid-back and relaxed spring-summer wardrobe is the woven basket bags. Make it the finishing touch to a classic jeans and blazer pairing, or add one to a simple summer dress and sandal combo. Flat from sandals are taking their place in the spotlight this season. As the perfect on-trend wardrobe addition, a comfortable everyday alternative to a pair of heels, flat from styles are practical and pretty, imbued with an air of sports looks, and paired back elegance. When it comes to ear adornments this season, more is more, so update your jewelry collection accordingly. But don't limit yourself to oversized hoops. Shoulder skimming earrings in mixed materials like brass, shells, glass beads. We offer a natural contrasting effect to dress up even the simplest looks and epitomize the go big or go home idea. Precious stone jewelry has emerged as a must-have for this season. Simple earring styles are spruced up with the application of colorful gems, while necklaces from architectural to classic are heavily embellished with touches of fresh water pearls, black onyx, rose quartz and more. The oversized tote makes a grand comeback this season. The ideal choice for a long weekend getaway or a day at the office, it is a hardworking style that belongs in everyday sartorial arsenal. Just in case you missed what Burner Boy wore to the recently concluded Grammys Award, the African giant has something spicy for you. The world was watching as the Afrofusion artist made history with his Grammy win and he served up some sharp sartorial inspiration in a crisp white suit by French luxury fashion house Dior. Opting for a bold multicolor printed shirt to match the vibrantly embellished blazer, Burner completed the outfit with oblique gloves and logo loafers also from Dior. For his virtual performance, 
He donned the costume convertible suit featuring recycled plastic gun tags from another French label bought at Paris, paired with black patent shoes by Spanish luxury fashion house Balenciaga. Both looks were styled by his sister and go-to stylist Ronami Ogulu. But was this a missed opportunity to highlight African fashion designers? Critics certainly think so, especially when held in comparison to his ensemble at the Grammys last year. A patent two-piece suit from Lagos-based fashion label Tokyo James, which he accessorized with a signature Fela Kuti diamond pendant. Candles are a great way to add to your home decor and ambiance. An even more authentic way to enhance the stylish vibe of your home is by making the candles yourself. Skooky's founder Jenna Onyema is using a fun mix of natural ingredients and green science, perfect for concluding your spring cleaning session. In the beginning of the creation of candles, they were used as a source of light. But in the 60s, the scientists now realized that this can be used for aromatherapy. So aromatherapy is a type of holistic medicine, basically. This is um, the olfactory senses are triggered you know, and sending like stimulus to, to your brain and can ignite emotions such as happiness, joy. We're always encouraging young artists to come here just to explore their creativity, be it through art, be it through science. Because I myself, I like to refer to myself as a creative scientist. That is a, a balance between the two worlds, you know, because I studied pharmacy. However, I've always had a passion for like creativity and all things art related. So this art and candle class is kind of an integrated class. The first thing they do is they paint on the pots. The next step is to fill the pots with the candle wax and all of that. So I basically took them through the whole journey of how to make a candle from soy wax and we used different scents mistletoe chamomile lavender these all can help you sleep and relax so for example if you want to get a candle that helps you relax it's good to look for these type of flavors and if you're looking for something that will wake you up in the morning make you more energetic I would say maybe like wild orange, strawberry, very fruity flavors. So yeah, there's something for everybody. Then there's stuff that helps you even clear your airways. And that's where things like eucalyptus oil come in handy, peppermint oil. And yeah, so during the class, I just showed them like the different oils that we have, use different wax and also the wicks and different types of like burners and stuff like that. And from scrubs, soaps, candles, I incorporate both the traditional and scientific methods to create these things. For me, candle making, in fact, the entire brand Skookies, Skooky making <laughs> is a very relaxing thing for me. I always find myself, you know, calmest when I'm doing these things. So it's really handmade with love. With their pleasant aromas and complementing colors, it's no surprise that candles are frequently the focal point of home decor. Remember, when decorating with candles, placement makes all the difference. These are some fun ways to decorate with candles in every room of your house. Place candles around your kitchen to match your contemporary or vintage designs. You can also use them in a centerpiece on your dining table. Cluster them in a corner of your bathroom to keep it fresh. Use bright colors to add a bit of style to your monochromatic bathroom or match them to the walls. Candles are the coolest in bedrooms. Light them on a side table, windowsill or beautiful scones to create a warm glow. Create warmth in your living room with candles on every side and coffee table around. Hide them in holders or keep them bare and organic depending on your space style. It creates a great ambience for family get-togethers. When possible, cluster your candles. Use a variety of heights. Use a variety of scents. Use them on scented or inside some stylish candle holders. No matter where you decide to use your candles, they will create a warmer, more welcoming environment, not only for your guests, but for yourself too.
Did you know that 41% of Nigeria's micro-businesses are owned by women? It's quite exciting to note that indigenous brands of Nigeria's fashion and beauty industry account for a vast majority of that percentage. A recent collaborative effort between the Nigeria Export Promotion Council and the International Trade Center She Trades Initiative highlighted the achievements of women-owned small and medium-scale sized enterprises. Director General of the World Trade Organization, Dr. Ungozi Okonjo Iwala, spoke at the event regarding promoting an enabling policy ecosystem for women entrepreneurs. Beneficiaries of the She Trade Initiative shared their success stories, including globally recognized brands like Mobola Sago's Beauty, Cosmetic and Personal Care brand, Share Origin, as well as Tenny OEM's sustainably sourced and produced brand of conscious artisanal accessories, Eclectic Chic. The event closed out with a robust Made in Nigerian showcase with notable attendance from two luxury Nigerian fashion labels based in the capital city. Amaka Uwonsisi's handcrafted leather accessories brand Magnisi and Ogwa Iweze's women's wear brand Design. And now it's time to explore the exciting future of African costume design. From the big screen to a red carpet premiere, let's see how designers and stylists are interpreting African royalty. African filmmakers have long used film and television to tell their stories and to reflect back particular styles and sensibilities of their culture. Over the years and within the last decade especially, Afrofuturist representation of African fashion on the screen has monumentally changed the way the world views the continent and its stylistically distinct regions and cultures. Costumes seen in international visual projects like Black is King, Black Panther, and Coming to America celebrate African culture and high fashion through a captivating lens. In 2019, Ruth E. Carter made history as the first black person to win an Oscar for costume design for her work on Black Panther. The film's recognition reverberated throughout the world not least on the African continent itself, where the Basotho blankets and Ndebele neck rings were instantly recognized for the items of rich heritage they are. It was a moment of pride that for so long had been denied to Africans portrayed on screen in Hollywood productions. Carter researched fashion of indigenous people across the continent, like the Tuareg of the Sahara and the Himba of Namibia, and also built a palette out of the Pan-African flag colors, using black, red, and green across the main cast costumes. For almost 40 years, Carter has fastidiously worked to create a singular Afrofuturist infused vision of the on-screen representation of black culture in cinema. For her latest project, the costume designer took on yet another massive challenge to create an Afrofuturist paradise filled with royals, courtiers, politicians, citizens, and dancers. In color-saturated fabrics and luxurious ornamentation, tribal streetwear, beaded bathing suits, a kente cloth kilt, and a wedding gown of Ankara fabric are just a few of the visual delights in coming to America. Drawn from Carter's incredible imagination and the 39 fashion designers from around the globe who collaborated on the film's 800-plus costumes. Carter incorporated African techniques for mask making and beadwork, in addition to custom designing and building countless costumes for the film. She collaborated with 39 independent designers, including South African designers Palese Mokubong of the label Mancho and Ladumo Onkolo of the label Mahosa, Lagos-based House of Diola, Nigerian designer Ikire Jones, Ghanaian designer Mimi Plange, Claude Kemeni from Cameroon, Ivory Coast Loza Maliombo and a host of others, shining a light on the continent's fashion scene, were also signed on. By tapping actual designers working in Africa to assist creating the film's 800 costumes, Carter helped expose local fashion designers to a wider audience and also showcased their individual triumphs. And the authentic and well-researched details contribute to giving filmgoers a more expansive view of Africa. Carter is well aware of the power she has to effect representation of Africa and the black experience. She said she took it very seriously and wanted to show the modern aesthetic of Africa.
The much-anticipated premiere of Coming to America took place at Filmhouse Cinema's Lekki, and your favorite stars showed up and showed out. Themed African royalty. The premiere red carpet was graced by many celebrities in outstanding styles and mind-blowing fashion pieces that brought the theme to life, all thanks to creative designers and stylists. Taking the titles for Best Dressed for the Night were BB Ninja stars Prince Nelson Ewerim and Kim Oprah. Oprah was styled by Zach Luxury, styling in a lace Ankara hybrid and headpiece from Anne Cranberry Couture. The headpiece paid homage to the Zulu monarchy of South Africa by recreating a traditional headdress known as Isicholo, used historically as a marker of identity, feminine pride and fashion. And then wearing was styled by award-winning celebrity stylist Swanky Jerry in authentic Ghanaian kente cloth and traditional jewelry. Amongst all of the traditional Ghanaian cloths, the kente fabric remains the most popular fabric used to create stylish traditional Ghanaian attires. A large piece of the cloth is draped across one shoulder while the other is used to wrap around the waist. Historically, gold is an integral component of traditional regalia used to represent his purity and vigor. Swanky Jerry also styled several of the night's memorable looks seen on Venita Akofuri, Messi AK, and Juliette Ibrahim. Thoughtful landscaping is the key to creating an outdoor oasis. This hidden gem in southwest Nigeria is using strictly local resources and sustainable design to create an unforgettable space. The inspiration for this area, this restaurant, is actually derived from the place Tambama, which is in Togo. I think it was two, three years back, and uh, we as a family, we went to have a vacation. So we ended up in this uh, rural area called Tambama in the northern part of Togo. So what we noticed in that place is the architecture. So the usage of nature elements like rock, mud, and then bamboo, that was what something inspired us because most of the restaurants in Ibadan, Lagos, Kano, Abuja are more centered towards modern architecture. We said, you know, a place like Ibadan, you would bring one that's out of the box, something that people have not seen before. So we thought of incorporating these elements into our architecture decor. So we, what we wanted to do was create something that's more nature oriented, but also something that brings in the culture. So you can find things like uh, bamboo shacks, you can find interiors that are done with uh, palm sticks, the ceiling done with the fiber you get from the palm, and even the furniture we do. It's basically uh, pallet wood, something that people just discard it off. We said, you know, it's not a waste. We can just salvage it and then turn it into something that looks after nature, tries to incorporate it and more or less environment friendly. When you come into Tambama, the first thing you would see is the bamboo shack. And the back side is where you have a completely open space. So overall it's about trying to give the customers different experience in the same area. We didn't want to uh, select furniture that was pre-made and you would have to incorporate it into your own system and how you want to showcase it. So what we thought of is bringing our own art, in terms of our own ideas into our furniture. During the construction process, we had to uh, cut down a few trees. So we thought of using them in other ways. So if you can focus more on the tables in the back area, they are basically cut wood logs from the tree and you assemble them as a table one after the other. So it becomes like a table. So our entire motive was to use what we have on this place itself. You can restructure it, re-engineer it and make it work to your own needs and bring out the nature and cultural element in this place. So the bamboo is uh, basically sourced from Ibadan itself, some of it from Ibadan, some, it, some of it from the indoors of uh, Ijabu areas, so you can find a lot of bamboo there. And uh, in terms of palm leaves, it's something you very common over here. So you can almost always uh, 
source it from any area here. The wood is sourced from uh, Elorin and some of it is sourced from the south side of it. The clay pots were actually something rustic. We figured this idea from uh, when we went to Tam uh, Togo. So they used a lot of clay. Even to make the houses, they used a lot of clay. So we said, you know, instead of making, it's not possible for us to make a house of clay. So let's try to incorporate that element in a different way. So we used basically clay pots as uh, displays in which you put light, which just showcases the beauty of the clay pot. And these clay pots are also locally sourced. They're from uh, Atamora, which is close by to Ibadan. And also there you can find some of the sculptors doing them in Egypt. Everything that you see here is uh, locally sourced. So we didn't use anyone from abroad. What we were more focused on is giving opportunities to local people to showcase their talent. He is a local artist from Lagos and we just gave him an idea of what we wanted, like something that shows showcases more of African art and African culture. This trunk behind me, um, we said, you know, it resembles a drum. So we hired the craftsman, we said, you know, this is our idea. Can you do like a drum carving on it, you know, bring out something of that culture into this area. There were a few things we wanted to do by ourselves, like we saw this uh, wooden trunk cut on the side of the road and just discarded. So we decided to just purchase that wooden trunk and we said, you know, why not give it a twist in the sense that take that wooden trunk, carve the name Tambama onto it, like a hollow carving. You put light in it, it's something different. It's People think of it as a waste which is lying down on the road, but then you fine-tune it, you work on it, and it turns into a, an art piece. Thanks for catching up with us today. For another exciting episode, be sure to tune in same time next week.